There was a girl. And the girl had a shadow. The two were connected. video about Get Out, we considered the motif of the screen as an invitation to consider the theme of representation as an angle of analysis of the film. The mechanism of control of black bodies in Get Out are similar to those of the blackface, attacking head-on the similitudes of slavery in black representation in mainstream cinema. The coagula process was thus identified as a literal version of a blackface. We then established an equivalence between the sunken place and the theater screen, pointing out a failure in the identification of the black viewers, which led to a detachment between them and the body represented on the screen. Peel masters the established codes of Hollywood cinema, so that the audience can easily identify with the protagonist in danger. We concluded that this racial mask used by the white dominant industry must be redefined by black artists so that they can regain control of their own image. By the way, since reconciliation begins with initial opposing forces, I will often, never with a pejorative or reductive intent, use the terms black and white. When Peel came back to horror in 2019 with us, the majority of critics seemed to have appreciated his mastery of the codes of horror cinema, on the other hand, many have reported that the racial theme was barely touched, offering a more standard fantasy horror film. Looking closely, the movie does seem to address the racial theme. As we'll see, Peel seems to approach the subject more subtly and by different methods than in his previous film. While Peel deconstructed and exposed the contemporary iteration of blackface in Get Out, he will find a new use for it. In Us, the concept of blackface is emptied of any racist connotations in order to be reshaped as a neutral figure. We will see that this remodeling depends on the uniformity of the skin color of the characters. This uniformity reveals the position of the characters within a powerful and unjustly unbalanced power dynamic. We are introduced to a typical American family, two adults, two children, financially well-off, but the relative professional and family success of the protagonists hides a dark reality, that of a large class of American society long hidden and forgotten on which a system of disparity and dependence was based. Several critics seem to see it as a commentary on class struggle. However, this struggle that drives the intrigue of us works according to most of the same mechanism to which are subjected the racial injustices for four centuries. These injustices have only been forgotten by privileged groups accustomed to the status quo. These mechanisms, as we saw in our video on Get Out, were extended to African-American representation, specifically through blackface. In Us, Peel gives a whole new use to this racial mask. In order to understand this use, we must first determine the nature of the social relations in the film. For the purpose of this analysis, we must first reduce the characters to the simple function they occupy in the hierarchic system at the heart of the film. The citizens live their lives in society, and the tethered survive in the underground. The name tethered can have two meanings in this case. It can mean tied, in the sense that a prisoner would be restrained. It can also mean a connection, an attachment to another person. Indeed, the tethered reproduce the gestures of the citizens. They copy every movement without any apparent possibility of thinking about it. They depend on the will and decisions of the privileged group. They are, from a purely functional point of view, slaves following the directives of their masters. Thus, the relationship between the two groups is comparable to that of slavery. <laughs> 
a subsequent exposition by the character of Red, the real Adelaide, reveals that the government is responsible for having created the tethered and then, faced with the apparent failure to give these individuals a soul of their own, abandon them. Their fate was thus closely linked to that of the citizens, their masters. This power relationship is metaphorical of a system supporting slavery and of the government's abandonment of the fight for black rights after every wave of African-American demands. This abandonment may indeed recall the government's reluctance to respond to the demands of the African-Americans during the civil rights movement, or even in the current climate since the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement. In her book The Hollywood Jim Crow, African-American sociologist Marian Eriga asserts that racial hierarchy has not disappeared since the Civil War, but has simply evolved in different forms and through different political regimes. However, each regime characterized race relations in a similar racialized manner, one that normalizes and lifts white Americans atop a racial ladder and meanwhile marginalize and sediments black Americans to the bottom, all within the boundaries of the law. We've also seen that the hierarchy and the representation of African Americans in Hollywood is a signifier of the power relations that are at work in American society. In us, this racial hierarchy is partially hidden, or rather camouflaged by a blackface. Peel, by the decision to make these characters look alike, neutralizes the possibility for the viewer to identify more with one or another of the characters according to the color of their skin. Adelaide and Red's family are black. If the family of citizens represents white individuals in our metaphor, it is therefore characters in blackface that appear on the screen. If the antagonism between the two groups does not appear physically in racial representation on the screen, it becomes difficult for the viewer to determine the hierarchy as being racial in nature. Since Peel uses a classical language of Hollywood cinema, he invites us to identify ourselves to or support the heroes, in this case the citizens. If it is possible to sympathize with the tethered and understand their motivations, it seems natural to show more empathy for the protagonists, especially if their lives are in danger. But by revealing that Red is in fact the real Adelaide and vice versa, the film questions this identification. If the viewer is led to sympathize with the protagonists, he is confronted by the fact that the mother was at birth part of the group of subhuman. It is the uniformity of the faces, that is to say the affixing of a black mask on the family of citizens, that makes this questioning possible. Of course, if we apply this logic to other characters, for example white characters, it is difficult to qualify this mask as blackface. We can indeed say that it is the white tethered who are white face characters. But the result is the same. The uniformity in the faces of the slaves and their respective masters prevents the identification with one or the other according to the color of their skin. In this context of identification, the mask thus neutralizes any potential notion of raciality. The tethered are for the most part represented as subhumans, beings fundamentally devoid of intelligence. They are incapable of thinking, they can only perform physical tasks. They are docile beings, but they can be dangerous if they are not sufficiently constrained and controlled. This description is comparable to the representation of black people in the era of slavery. As early as the 18th century, scientists such as the Swedish anthropologist Carolus Linnaeus undertook to biologically classify human beings. In his Systema Natura, he set forth this race classification system using skin color as a criterion for classifying races, while also assigning moral and intellectual capacities to each race. His intellectual classification system was based only on the physical attributes of the studied subjects. This desire to classify humans according to their color followed the way of thinking of social Darwinism, that is to say the application, at least an attempt, of the theory of evolution of Charles Darwin to human societies. 
With this theory, scientists like Herbert Spencer and William Graham Sumner tried to legitimize the racial hierarchy by arguing that whites were biologically stronger and smarter, and that of course, black people are naturally inferior beings. This was an attempt to normalize racism. These arguments are of an essentialist nature, that is, it is claimed that the source of the racial hierarchy is entirely natural. By the racial camouflage that blackface allows in us, and then by the questioning of the identification of the viewer to the protagonists, the mask becomes a shield to the racist gaze. By swapping the characters of Red and Adelaide at a very young age, Peel diffuses the idea that hierarchy is natural. The one we believe to be Adelaide appears to us as a complex being, three-dimensional, capable of deep thoughts and emotions. This is the opposite of the idea of social Darwinism. The protagonist proves that it is not her racial origins, or her initial position in the hierarchy, that allows or prevents her from being an accomplished citizen. Stereotypes of fundamentally stupid and dangerous individuals destined to serve the higher group become inapplicable. Peel thus prevents the attribution of a fundamentalist essence to this hierarchy. The filmmaker shows us that the potential and abilities, physical or intellectual, of these characters come exclusively from their environment, their education, etc. This is where the hierarchy collapses. Both groups become, from a racial point of view, naturally equal. During a debate at the University of Cambridge in 1965, the famous African-American author James Baldwin commented on the importance of destroying this racial hierarchy in the United States. It is a terrible thing for an entire people to surrender to the notion that one-ninth of its population is beneath them. And until that moment, until the moment comes, <coughs> when we, the Americans, we, the American people, are able to accept the fact that I have to accept, for example, that my ancestors are both white and black, that on that continent we are trying to forge a new identity for which we need each other, and that I am not a ward of America. I am not an object of missionary charity. I am one of the people who built the country. Until this moment, there is scarcely any hope for the American dream, because the people who are denied participation in it by their very presence, will wreck it. And if that happens, it's a very grave moment for the West. Thank you. This quote by Baldwin bears the trauma of the African-American community, of never having been considered by the dominant white group as being essential to the construction of the national identity. Black people should have the same rights of access to citizenship and dominant cultural myths. In us, this egalitarian identity for the tethered is claimed by a simple sentence said by Red. We're Americans. In her book about the theory of the post-traumatic slave syndrome, Joy Degree explains that the African-American community today lives with the psychological ravages resulting from slavery and the various forms of repression that followed. She explains that without having directly lived a traumatic experience, an individual may still be indirectly affected by learning that a close relative or close friend was exposed to trauma. If the event involved actual or threatened death, it must have been violent or accidental. Many slaves were traumatized by generations of horrific treatments. Many of them have experienced many abject events. Degree explains that trauma can alter the genetic code of the victim, then passing the resulting behaviors to subsequent generations. The genetic information of the child adapts according to that of the parent. Affected by the weaknesses and armed with the strengths that the trauma of racial hierarchy has created since slavery, the African American community can regain control of its identity and rights by performing an introspective look. It feels like there's this um, black cloud just hanging over me and uh, I don't feel like myself. I think you look like yourself. 
according to degree, an integral part of racial socialization is learning the histories of those in our family and community. Storytelling is an important part of our education. It strengthens us and helps us build resilience. It helps us put things in the proper perspective. It is as part of this healing process that Jordan Peele's cinema is essential for African Americans. We have seen that Peele deconstructs and reclaims the tool of the racial mask that was crucial to the enslavement of black Americans. Through cinema, he carries out this introspective look that Degree encourages in order to liberate the African Americans from an oppressive system, conscious or not, towards the blacks. The fluctuation in the relations of power and civil rights demands recur at regular intervals in the history of the country. The philosopher Alain Locke encouraged every generation of African Americans to renew and reaffirm their black identity. The very act of speaking out on the subject acts as a defense mechanism in the face of a social trauma that has lasted since the beginning of commercial slavery. Get Out and Us are in many ways representative of the power relations between the dominant white society and the black minority. This constant situation of enslavement maintains a feeling of incapacity for integration and inaccessibility of opportunities. This oppression is creating mounting anger towards systemic racism. The presence of films such as those of Jordan Peele is essential in the healing process in the face of the psychological ravages of a racial hierarchy disadvantaging the black community and in the face of the hypocrisy of a political regime that seeks to constantly forget and stifle the harmful consequences of its past decisions. While communicating the effect of black misrepresentation on the African-American community, Peel uses cinema as a way to cope with the trauma of slavery, using blackface and its mechanism as the main vehicles in this process. While the amount of black films seems stable since the 1970s, the number of black filmmakers has increased significantly. Voices and perspectives are thus multiplied. The image of African Americans is becoming both more diverse and also more complex. It creates a plurality of films concerning the condition of black people and dealing with characters struggling with simply human problems. It seems more important than ever for the future of the African-American community that they have access to a cinema that they can relate to and which respects them. <laughs>